Hi friends, we continue to discuss ITC every now and then and it is a favorite of investment community. It is also a favorite of the TV channels who are focused on investing. So in our business of analyzing stocks fundamentally as we uh, look to invest the wealth of uh, some of the high net worth individuals into the market. Uh, we also analyzed ITC and uh, I'll just give you a quick snapshot of uh, what we came across and what were some of the discussions that we had as a team when looking at ITC. So uh, let's proceed with this. Uh, see, typically uh, when we uh, look at investing any kind of sum of money, we want to know what is the investment objective. Is it uh, obviously the investment is uh, objective is to make money, but is it dividend which is attracting us or is it the potential of stock price increase so that we can buy now and sell later at a high? Is that going to uh, attract us or it is going to be a short term we feel that it is highly undervalued at this time and therefore we should put in or we should we, we want to say that this is a very safe investment better than FD uh, and rather than putting my money in fixed deposit I am better off uh, putting my money into ITC. So there could be uh, multiple investment objectives and basis that uh, this uh, analysis should be taken. So uh, when we looked at ITC, uh, we looked at certain uh, companies with comparable market capitalization. Uh, ITC market capitalization at this time is 2.6 lakh crores uh, as of uh, 10th of September. So we looked at companies not very uh, small, not very large. Uh, we uh, identified certain companies uh, in a range of 1 lakh crore to 5 lakh crore so we found that at least 35 plus such companies exist and uh, we will uh, take a look at those companies they are in different sectors and therefore it's a pretty diverse group but the point of having these comparable companies is that if I have 100 rupees today where should I invest uh, what would be my considerations. The so businesses, there are four different verticals, FMCG, hotels, agribusiness and paper boards. These are the four businesses in which ITC operates. And if you look at the growth, actually we should not look at the growth because last year's um, uh, quarter uh, was completely impacted by COVID. And therefore you see a very uh, nice growth coming in uh, in Q1 of uh, this current financial year and that's where you are seeing uh, a good growth but uh, I think the real uh, interesting part would be to see the growth of this quarter which is Q2 of the current financial year and see uh, how the growth uh, looks like. But net net yes uh, healthy growth uh, in the cigarette business. Uh, hotels also uh, I would say good growth last uh, last year corresponding quarter was completely washed out because there was absolutely no travel happening. Agri business not so much of growth because agri business was running uh, at that time and uh, last year paper business was also completely wiped out because the schools and offices and everything was locked and uh, there was there was no uh, hardly any demand for paper. So I would say uh, look at these growth numbers with a slight pinch of salt because they are not strictly like to like. Now look at the profit. The interesting part is look at the quantum of profit which comes from FMCG and specifically from cigarettes. So this number, this number as part of this number, total profit. You can see this is approximately 80% of this number. So cigarettes is driving 80% of profit. 
imagine a situation where uh, cigarettes business does not have a certain future because more and more health consciousness is coming uh, in the public and plus government is also always happy to uh, tax or give some regulations uh, put some regulations and itc being a very uh, ethical company uh, in the sense of processes uh, in the sense of adhering to rules uh, if i look at itc uh, cigarette business uh, they would give uh, their the fair share of tax to the government however uh, there are other spurious uh, cigarette companies because what does it take to manufacture a cigarette, right? Uh, it, it's a pretty straightforward business and these companies might be undercutting ITC and uh, might be cropping everywhere and taking their uh, taking taking market share away from ITC. So d certainly uh, this business is under question uh, from a future perspective. There is no doubt about that. Now look at the other businesses, other businesses, why these businesses are not reaching any particular uh, nice uh, level. Uh, I, I fail to see it. For example, in the latest quarter, why is this other FMCG business not contributing uh, substantially? Why is this agri business not contributing substantially still i i can say paper board yes i think this is this is a still a better number uh, so uh, hopefully all these segments are going to grow and they will uh, become a substantial percentage of uh, the total business of itc one more thing to uh, note here is that i would not go by the percentage of revenue uh, of the other comp other verticals uh, in as a total of ITC, I would be more interested in looking at the uh, profit numbers because profit numbers, if if other segments are improving their contribution to profit numbers of ITC, then it will definitely uh, be a very healthy move for ITC. So baselining ITC, the latest uh, dividend yield was, uh, I think, approximately. Uh, 5% over the last 12 months growth prospects we have just discussed they I would say they are average growth prospects not very high not very low because the main driver of uh, the business which is cigarette that is under a little bit of question so uh, also you would note that most of the other verticals which ITCs has started operating they are very asset heavy or operations heavy businesses it's it's difficult to uh, manage such businesses but obviously it has good experience of managing and uh, they have a good uh, you know uh, supply chain uh, and the dealer network etc so they they have the ability to reach every nook and corner of our country and that's where uh, they can leverage that but still i would say it's an asset heavy operations heavy business logistics heavy business risk yes to itc business is there investors are calling it fmcg fmcg they are uh, it's being called primarily as you have already seen primarily uh, it is being called because uh, cigarette is classified into fmcg but if you really exclude cigarette is it really fmcg is it not paper is it not uh, let's say the other uh, businesses like agri business is it not agri business so we need to uh, be mindful of that as well that where does it qualify and uh, where, where should it be categorized the other is that if you are having 100 uh, rupees and you want to allocate then i think too high an allocation for ITC is not the right move. Probably you should control and uh, have a have a reasonable so that you don't enter into a situation where this is not moving still and there are uh, risks and they are not able to do justice to the balance of the segments. And the last part is that why would you not put your money elsewhere which there are, might be better opportunities in other companies uh, compared to ITC. So that being said, let's look at 
two uh, key factors one is dividend and the other is future growth or risk factors related to other companies which are in similar market cap range which are large cap so the first one uh, is basically this PSU sector which is oil and gas oil and gas is definitely uh, a business uh, which is here to stay till the time uh, we achieve anything reasonable on uh, the renewable energy front but at this time uh, oil and gas business is here to stay that's very clear and the dividend yield is uh, pretty lucrative so if you want a continuous dividend stream coming to your account then i think this is a attractive proposition and if you really look at iucl uh, can you imagine that uh, this is uh, basically trading at about uh, three to four times uh, the profit uh, annual profit that it generates so almost 30000 crores of annual profit is generated by iucl and uh, its market cap might be about a lakh crore or so another is metals because of the infrastructure movement uh, a metal pack is also moving quite uh, very nicely but it has already run up quite a lot so i don't know how much more it can run up but definitely a stable uh, sort of business uh, with a good dividend yield not many risk factors in metal not many risk factors in oil and gas that i can see now look at auto auto is interesting first of all it's a large sector there is absolutely no doubt that people will continue to buy vehicles and uh, there is also absolutely no doubt that given the per capita uh, vehicles uh, you know ownership in india is low uh, it is only going to grow and there is a electric vehicles play is which is also going to come up so all put together i think this from a growth perspective this looks interesting to me uh, coming to pharma again healthcare is a sunrise industry we have already seen hospitals uh, running up quite a lot and after hospitals if hospitals are making more money there is absolutely no doubt that the pharma is going to make money and definitely healthcare problems in india are growing and therefore uh, there is no looking back for this sector even though this sector has been depressed for quite some time but i think pharma has a good uh, future from growth perspective coming to banks banks have been subdued for quite uh, a long time now because of the asset quality i think that banks will have a bright future uh, first of all they have already uh, they have already taken measures even uh, reserve bank of india has taken quite some measures to uh, control the asset quality and control the way banks perform themselves and conduct themselves so going forward any economy uh, is is buoyed by banks uh, money is the primary driver of any kind of economy any kind of growth so i would say banks have a bright future in the times to come and the last is tech and it you know given all the digitalization which is going on artificial intelligence there is absolutely no end to how much improvement we can do in every aspect of life because of it and that's where i think this is also a very promising sector now looking at itc and looking at these industries we would say there are opportunities out there which are probably better than better than itc and therefore if you definitely want to have itc in your portfolio i would say do not over invest in itc maybe put about 5 maximum uh, 7 uh, or 8 percent of your portfolio into itc i think that should be uh, enough to safeguard you from non movement of itc and uh, at the same time uh, you can invest rest of your portfolio into uh, diversify uh, your investments into other companies 
so that's all uh, friends thanks for watching